title of this video is alignment. Now, alignment is the relationship of things to align. Chiropractors will tell you that the alignment of your spine is the most important part of your body in terms of your health. Similarly, in graphic design and the design of charts and graphs, alignment is absolutely critical. Nothing should be placed randomly on a page. Everything should be linked visually in some way. Everything should be there for a reason and you should know what the reason is. You want things to look as good as possible because you don't want badly placed information to get in the way of your messy. Let's look at some options. Here's a few examples of some business cards. Which one do you like the best? Separated out to the edge? Central alignment? Or all tied together to a single line? Well, the idea is that the strength of the edge down the bottom gives strength to the layout. Let's talk about edges. There are two shapes next to each other, but you kind of realize straight away that there's actually a line across the bottom. You don't see it, but you get a sense that it's there, that the two pictures are actually on some kind of common ground. But it doesn't just have to be the edge where this alignment can occur. It can occur in the middle, and it can also occur in the center. Putting something in the center can really make it pop when there are only a few elements. And I think this is a great example of simple classy design. Justified text can, can look very good. Every element of the text on the left lines up with the side of the page. Every element on the right lines up with the side of the page. But you'll see that there are breaks in the words between alignment and between words. And that makes it start to look ugly. And the last word, in, which is very spaced out letters, looks quite unappealing compared to the rest of it. So use justified text with care. It can make text look better, but you need to be very careful about the consequences of actually applying full width justification. You've got to make choices and there are options to choose from. Take the graph on the left. The left axis potentially is ordered alphabetically, but look at the transformation from before to after. Just how much information you get when you actually order by height. You've got to make those choices to really bring out what you're trying to talk about. The title of this video is Proximity. Proximity is a concept that the closer things are together, the greater the relationship between them. Make the background and the foreground, the white space, work for you. Avoid putting too many or unrelated elements too close together because they can clash. Proximity, things being together, is a very powerful tool and allows you to compress information. But be really careful how you do it. Let's look at some examples. If you read an article in the popular press, do you prefer pictures or do you prefer the numbers? You can see down the bottom of the example where you've got people joined together in groups. Up the top, they're together individually. There's different ways of communicating the information. And by grouping down the bottom, you've taken less space in demonstrating 81% as opposed to taking up more space to demonstrate 54%. But why not just have the numbers? You've got to make those choices depending on who your readership is. If they're not strong with mathematics, well then maybe you want to have a pictorial form like this. Let's look at some white space working. The column of the left just has a long list of text. The column of the right, it's got headings in bold, but the headings in bold are accented by the white space above the heading. The list on the right is longer, but it's much clearer to see the categories. So get that background foreground relationship working for you to make things pop, to really give people a quick way of searching your information. I can look down that column on the right and go, bang, I'm interested in thematic. What have we got there? In the left, I have to do a bit of a search because there's no, there's nothing that allows me to quickly scan down through the, through the list. Here's some examples of before and after. The first one looks very much like a, a data table in Excel. The last one basically pulled out all of the cell boundaries. It's spaced out the data a little bit more, using again white space to provide that distinctive element. And it's really quite easy to see through that data. Using white space to your advantage is something you may not have thought much about but it's certainly a strategy that's, that's very popular in any kind of visual design. Here's another example of, of minimalist design. 
So before we had cells for things, after we've got the absolute bare bones of the, the information. It's very fast to look at this slide. There's not much going on there. You can make choices very quickly. As you've been told many times, keep it simple, stupid. Let the white space work for you.